Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Jack, and welcome back to Loud Movies. Today, I'm going to be talking about one of the most, in my opinion, one of the worst of films of the Indiana Jones franchise. Of course, if you do enjoy today's video, please leave a like, subscribe, comment down below, and uh, let's just get straight into it. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. The reason this is being reviewed as a part of the classics is because it's a part of a classic franchise. It's a franchise that I love, and to be honest, I call them classics. But any film that I watch and I want to talk about, I'm just going to talk about. That's the way things are going to be. Two videos a day, that's what I'm going to try and do here. Of course, I did three videos yesterday, two videos today. I know there will be a third video up probably about two hours after this video. And that is just a collaboration of all of the uh, reviews. Just I've done this one massive from Indiana Jones 1 to Indiana Jones 4. It's a massive review thing that I'm doing on the channel, of course. It is basically the exact same as review 1, 2, 3. Just without the introduction, just without the ending. So, I just want to clarify that. If you see a full movie review, it is the exact same thing as you're watching here. But if you do want to drop some support on that, go into that video, click the like button, watch it for 5-10 minutes, then back out if you want to. But with that being said, let's just begin. So, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull is one of them films for me that's a bit like a nostalgia film. Because I grew up watching the three first three film, first three Indiana Jones films. And in 2008, this film was released, and it was my first ever proper time watching an Indiana Jones release. I was probably about four, six, six, seven years old at the time. I was getting the Lego Indiana Jones sets, I was getting all the merch that was coming out at the time. I was just obsessed with this stuff. And Indiana Jones 4 was like one of the biggest things, it was always in my mind. And I'd come home and I'd watch the film and then I'd watch it again and I'd watch it again. Along with, of course, the other three. And <clears throat> I loved the film, I praised the film. But it's only when my movie taste has changed and, of course, as you mature, you understand that certain things, you know, you understand the classics. Like, I've understood, my, my, my opinion's changed on the first four films, you know, the, the entire franchise over the years. I always loved the original trilogy. I always loved it. In my eyes, that was always, you know, I just watched all four. That was what I did. The one thing that I did do was I watched four quite a lot. I had a bit of an obsession with it because I was collecting the Lego Mega Jones sets. I had number one, I had number two. I didn't even have the big Kingdom of the Crystal Skull set they did. And the one thing that I quite like about watching this film is... Even though it is a poorly done film, it's it's not bad. It's just not an Indiana Jones film. I, I mean, I've been watching... The, the, I watched the film, and I think the thing with this film is that it was such a long wait that the older generation don't like it. And the reason why I don't like it is because it's that sci-fi alien stuff that I thought was just in Star Wars, and they try to transport it into Indiana Jones, and it didn't necessarily work all that well. It's one of them films that would have worked if it was like a Nicolas Cage type of film, I believe Sean Chandler once said. And I, I mean, I sort of understand where he's coming from. I mean, I watch National Treasure. National Treasure will be reviewed on this channel because there's rumours of a Disney Plus series and stuff, but I'll get into that eventually. But the one thing that I find with this film is that the relationship between Indy and Mutt. That's the one thing I quite like. Of course, Indy... Is this professor who, who's been a professor for all the three films, and for the first time in his life, that's taken away from him, because he's of course abducted by the Russians during this is during the Cold War as well, and he's abducted by the Russians and they sort of ask him to help them break into this facility and find the, the Crystal Skull essentially, so they can locate the. Uh, the kingdom of it all and it's this they, they go into the warehouse that he's never been in before and i do love the little tea you know the, the little connections to the original trilogy that they have in this and one of them of course being the lost ark they have that as one of the connections of course the other connection i'll discuss a bit later on but the, but yeah one of the very first connections they have is the uh lost ark from raiders you get to see that within the film and they smash it for a crate and the other thing that I really do enjoy about this entire series is the fact that Indiana Jones, with this film, it's a bit like they brought back the nostalgia of Indy. They did a lot of things right. The only thing I would complain about is the CGI. 
Of course, that's something else to be discussing within Indiana Jones 5 uh, videos that I will not, I do not like CGI in these sort of films. And this film had a lot of it. Whether it's because he just, whether it's because George Lucas had just finished Star Wars at this point, bearing in mind he finished Revenge of the Sith in 2005 that released. This started production 2006, 2007, released in 2008. Uh, I mean, there's there's a lot to go on here. Why this film is the way it is. Maybe George Lucas didn't want to let go of Star Wars just yet, but knew he had no more stories for Star Wars. So he put another indie out there. And I think the thing is, I know that Steven Spielberg and Harrison Ford have said this in the past. They weren't fully keen on the whole alien idea, but they went with it. And they got that sort of film. So, the film that they got was because George Lucas wanted an alien film, which, I, I mean, I won't complain, it's an Indiana Jones film. I was about, like I said, I was 2007, 2006, I was watching these films, and this is what I grew up on, and I was just like, I want an Indy 4. And I was always told that there'd never be an Indiana Jones 4, because The Last Crusade was the last, the last one, because it was called The Last Crusade. And for them to come back into Indiana Jones... And do the fourth kingdom of the crystal skull i thought was amazing at the time now i sort of divert my opinion a little bit of it but the thing is i i very much can understand why most original fans hate this film and i don't i this isn't my favorite film this is one of my least favorite film but of course that'll all be in the rankings of what is my favorite and that we can discuss and sort of meddle about within that uh in in like literally by tomorrow that video should be out but the one thing i will say about this film that I love the most about is the connection between Indy and Mutt. Of course, at that point, like he just calls him Gramps and stuff. It's like this is kind of funny, and I love the fact that they brought Marion back. There's a lot of callbacks to the very first film and the second and the third, uh, but one of the callbacks, of course, is Marion. The other one is the, uh, what was the other one? I said, "Pah, oh, jeez, blew me out of my mind quickly." Um, but the, the one that I really do enjoy is the relationship between Mutt and Indy because Indy doesn't know it yet, but he is Mutt's dad. And once that's revealed, it's quite funny because he goes, when he finds out his name is Henry Jones Jr. or the third, he goes, all right, Jr. And he goes, don't call me that. And there's, there's a lot of little t t things in there that I love. And the other references that I enjoy, it's not an Indiana Jones reference, it is a Star Wars reference, but Harrison Ford goes, I have a bad feeling about this, and that's what Han Solo says in the films. So there's loads of callbacks to Star Wars in this film as there was in the first three films, and there's a callback to the first three films with the with the arc, that was the callback that I was thinking of at the time, remembered it, with the whole father-son relationship, they've done it in a different way this time, and it was something that worked. The issue I have with this film is the CGI. And that's really it. Mutt as a character is a bit bland, but the issue was they were going and doing it as an Indiana Jones movie. They weren't doing it as a Mutt Williams film or, or a Mutt Jones film or a Mutt, Mutt Raven film. I do think Shia LaBeouf had the opportunity to take the character off of Harrison Ford's hand. They set that notion up quite nicely, but they left it a little bit of a teaser with an indie the issue is, of course, Shia LaBeouf has gone out and said on many occasions that the film is god awful bad. He doesn't like the director of the film and he just bashes it all the time. Now, that I know is something that he's done in the past and he doesn't really do big films. I, I, I literally read just a minute ago that one of his latest films sold one ticket here in the UK. I don't really follow Shia LaBeouf anymore. I mean, I watched the Transformer films he was in, I watched Indiana Jones. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull course that he was in, but th th he just sort of lost it. He's lost his touch, to be honest. And I feel like that is something within this franchise that I think, okay, let's be real here. Indiana Jones for it's it's an old time classic in in, in the sense of the original trilogy. It's going to be an old time classic for the franchise. But do I think they could have done Indiana Jones five with a Mutt Williams? A hundred percent. Because Indiana Jones isn't his name. It's Henry Jones. He's Henry Jones Jr. Harrison Ford, to me, is Indiana Jones. But Indiana Jones can also be Mutt Williams and just hand down the torch. Essentially, that's what it, is. That's what it could be. 
So, there's a lot of stuff within that film that calls for a fifth film. But with the whole Charlotte Buff falling out, I reckon that's probably why Lucas and Spielberg and Harrison didn't bother coming back for a fifth one until Disney bought it and was like, look, we want to do a fifth. And do I really... I mean, I wanted Mutt in the fifth film. I will admit this. I wanted Mutt in the fifth film for about two, three weeks. Because even though I don't particularly like Shia LaBeouf as an actor anymore, I did like him in the past. The one thing I will say is you don't have to have Shia LaBeouf in the, in the role. You can have Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt could take over the role. I know Chris Pratt was top to be Indiana Jones back in 2018 when they are about to do the whole reboot. But I seriously think they could do uh, have him as Shia LaBeouf. Nobody would really, in Shia LaBeouf's role even, and nobody would particularly care all that much. I I will I'm that sort of person that might care a little, but you get over it and you just sort of see how the film rolls, and that could be the way of Chris Pratt having the hat at the end is, you know he takes the hat and he works with it. Of course, the one thing that isn't going to happen in Indy Five, which a lot of people are worried about, is is Indy going to die? This is a video that I'm going to be doing very soon. I'm doing loads of Indiana Jones videos at the moment, and I've got another movie review coming out called The Pig. Nicolas Cage, just just to give you guys a bit of a breather from Indiana Jones stuff, really. But I'm a massive fan of this franchise, and I'll follow it until the end, uh, and end of time, really. But the one thing I will say about this film that, that it does kind of beautifully is it's not a good film, but it does do... It's a send-off that we didn't want or need, but in the end, it's a send-off that we deserved in the sense of Indy and Marion's relation, and... Uh, Mary's relationship because they get married at the end of this film and I think that's something that you know you've got to look at and go well they did get married at least they got married and is that a good thing yes because I'm always one of the people who always wanted her to return so one thing this film did do is it made her return of course she has to return in Indiana Jones 5 uh, because she's married to, to Henry and I don't know how they're really going to explain Mutt's disappearance within the franchise, or if they're just going to not even mention him, to be honest. Uh, so, the, the, you know, they've done it with a couple of films and TV shows over the year where they mention characters, or they just don't bother. So, with that being said, I think this film is one of the most interesting films they've possibly ever done. It's one of the most ambitious films that Lucas and that have done, given the fact they did Star Wars. But it's one of the most ambitious in the sense of it was 20 years. It's also the best Indiana Jones film of the box office. And I think that's purely because, of course, it's been 20 years. And it was 20 years since the third and this one. And I just think that, you know, if that did 758.8 million or something at the box office, imagine what Indy 5 would do with Disney's boost out there. I think, you know, I really want the series to hit a billion. The second it hits one billion pounds or dollars, it's it's going to be massive. I mean, the, the franchise is already massive. But what I mean is, it's going to be massive in Disney's eyes. Disney are going to see the potential, and then we're just going to get Indiana Jones content here, left, right, and center. I I mean, I'm going to be doing it. I'm going to be doing another video, of course, because I have heard rumors about an, a possible revival of an old Indiana Jones show, which I'm very much excited for. But. <sighs> I don't know, what's your guys' opinion on the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? Like I said, all these four videos will be collaborated together. We will have all these four videos, um, all, all the last four reviews for Neo Jones, they'll all be in one big collaboration. If you guys could just go hit the like button, that'll really help me out on that video. And even if you don't watch it all, just hit the like, watch it for five, ten minutes, get past the first review again, because let's be honest, it was a pretty cool film, pretty awesome review, I think, in my personal opinion. Maybe you guys didn't think so. If you have any ideas on how I could grow or make my videos better, as I want to grow as a creator, and I, of course, if you grow as a creator and you grow in your content and you make your content better than it already is, because at the moment my content could be better, I know that, but what I'm working with at the moment is probably the best I can do for a while. What I want from you guys is to let me know, what can I do? How can I do this? Do you guys, what movie reviews do you think will do well here? Because I'm all up for old, early 2000, well, 2000 to 2020 movies, uh, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 movies, 2021 films that I've not yet review, reviewed. 
of course I have so many plans for this channel and this channel to me is just going to ex exceed my expectations I really hope I hope it runs away with itself in a sense and I hope I can get caught up in talking to all of you guys as well that's the one thing the one reason why I started this channel was one it's a hobby but two I have such a movie obsession I'm a movie hothead I wanted to talk to you all about movies so please please leave your comments in the section below of course I do apologize for the video that I did with the Indiana Jones 5. I couldn't get the rights to the clips at the time of having to upload it to try and hit an audience. I am very sorry about that. But with that being said, I will now finally finish the video and I'll see you all within the next one. Goodbye for now.